Hello and welcome. My name is Yves Sanford. I'm going to present to you today VMware vCloud Automation Center 6.0 Basic Tenant Configuration. First, we are going to open a browser to connect back to our specific VCAC appliance. In this case, we are going to uh, connect to HTTPS colon colon slash our VCAC appliance um, slash shell minus UI minus app. There might be two security warnings. We are actually jumping from the appliance, uh, from the VCAC appliance um, to the SSO system, which is in our case the vCenter server appliance here, where we are going to log in, even though it tells us it's vCloud Automation Center, it's just going to do the uh, login. You can see that from the browser URL easily. And um, once um, that has been successful, we are going to be um, moved over back to the VCAC appliance. Wait for the appliance um, window to be loaded. Again, you can see the URL. It's the appliance URL slash shell dash UI dash uh, shell minus UI minus app slash. As you can see, when you first enter the system, uh, you will see that the system automatically created a basic tenant called vSphere.local. We are going to click edit on that one as we need to create an additional identity store. Um, an identity store in this case um, may be an open LDAP or an Active Directory um, system. We are going to leverage Active Directory as that is what we have in our demo or lab environment here. We are going giving it a name, in our case CABDC. We are going to pick um, the type Active Directory. You need to give it the URL um, that's uh, typically LDAP or LDAPS colon slash slash and then the um, domain controller plus the port number. Um, if it's if it's um, a main domain controller, it might also be port 3290, or if it's LDAP S, it's 636 usually. Give it the domain, the domain alias, so that your users don't need to full type the full domain name all the time. Um, you need to provide a login user. That's what VCAC leverages to collect information about um, existing user accounts. You can specify a password, and you can also specify if there is a specific group search based DN. Um, in our case, we want to search the complete um, directory um, of that active directory scenario, so we give it the domain. We click test connection to validate that all our parameters are correct. Once that has been successful, we click add, and um, that basically gives us new, a new identity store now. Next, we are going to switch to the administrators tab. Um, you need to actually provide the usernames and password uh, usernames for the account. So just start typing and you will see as you type in the information, there is a little um, pop up window or a little drop down window showing up. Um, select the account from there. And in our case, we want to give um, that specific domain admins um, group um, the tenant administrator role as well as the infrastructure administrator role. That way, um, that specific those users can actually uh, maintain both the um, tenant and the um, infrastructure area. Uh, the tenant administrator and the infrastructure. Infrastructure is everything which is related to the configuration of um, all the endpoints and all the additional parameters, whereas um, for the tenant that's mainly user control, you might want to take a look at the um, install and configuration guide, which gives you a bit more detail about the specific user roles and what they actually do in their system. Click update to confirm um, these settings. Next, we are going to click log out to just validate that um, our just made changes are actually going to work. For that, we have a user called vcac underscore admin in that specific domain and that is actually part of the domain admin uh, group. So we are going to leverage that specific account and uh, take that account and log in with that account into the system 
and see if we can actually um, administer the system now. If everything was fine, you see, should see a screen like this. You have the home dashboard. We will cover in a later video on how to customize that one. You have an inbox tab, an administration and an infrastructure tab. As we move through the different system parameters, you will see that there will be more tabs coming up in the system. Once we have completed that specific piece, we now need to enter a license key for that specific tenant. Um, the reason for that is that we need to be sure or that we allow specific tenants to have their own license keys. So for example, if you are a service provider, this might be useful to actually um, provide individuals with their own license keys. So imagine you only have VCAC licenses for internal um, setup, but there are specific departments who want to leverage um, um, to deploy to Amazon or Hyper-V or Azure or something else, then they might actually add the license keys for their specific solutions. Once that license key is added, the system will confirm that. You can also see what type of license, whether it's expired or something like that, and for how many users, uh, units and how many units are currently being used. Going back to the infrastructure, there are some a few more other settings we need to make before we can actually fully control the system. One is we need to set up specific credentials. Credentials are used to log into specific services. So um, it's just a combination of a username and password, but that is what the different endpoints are going to leverage. We need one for the vCenter server. In our case, that's we give it a name, username administrator at vSphere.local um, and enter the password. And then you hit the green check mark to confirm that specific service. Setting. We need another one in our case because we leverage vCloud network and security and um, that is going to have its own username and its own password and both should be set up actually before you define the endpoint within VCAC. So talking about the endpoint that's going to be next, we click new endpoint and you can see all the different types for cloud services, physical environments, storage and virtual. And we are going to leverage a vCenter endpoint um, for this specific scenario. For that, um, again, you give it a name. Um, in this case, remember in, in one of the last videos I produced, there was the name of the endpoint uh, or proxy agent we defined. Take the same exact name over here, otherwise you will run into issues potentially. The address, remember the address here needs to be with slash SDK at the end. And then you pick the credentials. And in our case, as we leverage VCNS, we are going to actually give it also the address of the specific VCNS server we are going to leverage here. Again, credentials can be um, added to this one. Otherwise, the login will just not be possible. So once we have the credentials actually selected and picked, um, this might take a few seconds from, from time to time, we um, can move on and actually um, save the specific new endpoint. So again, we pick the credentials, hit OK, hit OK again, and our endpoint is created. As VCAC cannot only deal with um, vSphere endpoints, we are also going to um, set up another endpoint for, for vCloud Director in just a second. So wait for the vCenter endpoint to be saved. And then the next one is going to be that we create actually a vCloud Director endpoint. So again, we are going to hit new endpoint And in this case, we are going to pick cloud and then VR vCloud director. That's our link to a vCloud director. That doesn't need to be an internal vCloud director. That could also be a hosted vCloud director or an external vCloud director. Um, and as you can see, you can actually access it from a system level. That's what we are going to do now. And by the way, you can also create the credentials just from the credential screen. That's something we are going to do now. So we give it the name vCloud Director. We give it a username. In our case, it's administrator. So the default um, um, vCloud Director username. We give it a password. And um, then again, the green check mark. Um, you click OK, and then the system will automatically pick the just created new credential entry 
if you need to, you could pick an organization, but in our case, we just want to access it on a, um, on a nah, system level. Going back to the infrastructure, the next thing you need to set up is actually fabric groups. But be aware before you start adding a fabric group, there might be specific scenarios. And I have seen that actually quite often um, during, during my lab times where you don't see any compute resource in the beginning. For that to work, you first need to wait a while. But even if then after a while it doesn't show up, you might want to change check your services. So as we are on the IAS server, we can directly do that over here. So you open the services control panel from Microsoft and within the services control panel, you are going to scroll down to the specific VCAC services. So in this case, it's going to be VCAC, um, a vCloud Automation Center services. So first of all, we have the vSphere agent. Um, as I'm in that screen, I'm going to give it a little kick by just restarting that. And the second one you see here is the vCloud Automation Center service. For whatever reason, sometimes after the install, that service is not automatically started. Um, I have no clue why that happens. Even if you restart the server, it sometimes doesn't come up. So if you are having issues in collecting data or um, issuing any commands against your infrastructure as a service system, um, just go back in here and validate that the services are properly set up and working. That's the best um, to actually see if that's working. Oh, as we can see, the proxy agent didn't do a restart because the service didn't work properly. Um, in that scenario, we just give it another start. And as you can see, it starts automatically and we hit a refresh just to check if it, if it actually persists. So once that is done, we can again um, click on fabric groups and try to run new fabric groups. Again, it might take a couple of seconds. You can see already we now have the um, fabric group for vCloud Director, but we want to actually um, collect from a fabric group for vSphere. So that might actually take a few seconds longer before we can see that. Um, because for that actually to happen, the system needs to completely um, download all the specific vSphere data um, from the vSphere system. And that actually, from my experience, can easily take um, from a couple of seconds um, to a few more minutes. So let's try again and um, click new fabric group and see if we now have all the necessary parameters. As we can see, we now have a vCenter endpoint and a vCloud director endpoint. And now we are fine in actually creating a fabric group. For those of you who have dealt with VCAC 5.2 before, um, VCAC 6 actually um, have leverages a few new terms. Uh, fabric groups are a bit like the old, um, um, the old uh, provisioning groups. But again, there is a guide which actually explains in a bit more detail on um, what exactly you need. We also add the administrator. In our case, we typed VCAC admin for that. Be sure that you only type and wait for that dropdown to show in and um, then pick it from there. Click OK. It might take a couple of seconds until it actually stores the information. And here we go. We have our first vSphere Fabric group linking us back to our environment. Next, we are going to check if the um, collection has been completed successfully. This is also a good point. If you ever create additional resources, you might actually um, quickly want to do that um, uh, on your own. So for that, we go back um, onto the resource. Within the compute resource um, pane, you can actually click data collection. And within the data collection, you can see the different areas. So inventory, um, state, performance, VCNS, inventory. And before you continue with anything in VCNS, it is strongly recommended to make sure that always all of these individual services are um, in a state succeeded. So we can see that the first one is already completed. Again, 
um, there is a refresh button at the bottom. Click that, do not click the refresh from the browser and uh, wait for a couple of seconds until all your individual services are completed. Um, if you continue with your VCAC implementation before all of them are succeeded, you might run into issues that you just don't see all the data you need in your environment. So as we can see, we now have state, performance, inventory, and even VCNS inventory um, downloaded and information is there completely. So back into our systems, we are going to go back to the groups. We need to create um, next um, a business group for our specific fabric group. So, but before we do that, let's quickly create another fabric group for our vCloud director. We are not going to do a manual data collection for that one because we are not going to use it right away. So um, just give it the name vCloud director or vCloud fabric group. That's just our naming convention here. Again, the same administrator is going to be leveraged. You can see again the drop down menu and then you just pick that um, specific data center resource. Again, you click OK and um, the system is ready to go. And from now on, you could actually provision against vCloud Director. Finally, click log out. That's it for this session. See you soon. My name is Yves Sanford. I'm the CEO of the ComDivision Group. Um, this was the VMware VCAC 6.0 basic tenant configuration. And um, you can reach me on Twitter at um, Yves Sanford or drop me an email at y.sanford at comdivision.com.